going to call to order the uh, Town of Old Saybrook Zoning Commission regular meeting and hybrid for Monday, May 6th, 2024, 7 p.m. Town Hall, first floor conference room, 302 Main Street, Old Saybrook. Tonight, there's myself, Mark Calderella, chair, Jerry Lewis, vice chair, regular commission members, John Hendry, secretary, sorry, John, I forgot that. Uh, Bob Friedman and Laura Gray. Um, two alternates tonight, we have Brenda and um, Mike Kelly. Also in attendance is our Z CEO officer, Chris Costa, our clerk, Joanne Galley. Um, we also have our attorney, Matt Willis, online on Zoom. And there are three, six, seven, eight in the audience and four online. Um, regular business, uh, we have our uh, minutes from our Monday, April 15th, 2024 uh, meeting. Uh, make a motion to um, accept the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by um, Sherry Lewis. Any discussion, corrections, and see any. Joanne, once again, very well done. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed, abstentions, passes 5 zero, zero. Thank you. Any correspondence other than what's related to this evening? Yeah. And moving on, uh, continued public hearings. A707 Boston Post Road application for special exception use to modify parking lot to allow for reallocation of tenant space for H&R Block and a Goodwill drop-off center. 707 Boston Post Road. Map 36, Lot 101, Shopping District B2 District, or Shopping Center B2 District, Pedestrian Node, Owner DF Shoreline LLC, Agent Stewart uh, Fairbanks, Action Continue or Close Public Hearing by May 6, 2024, which would be this evening, or no later than May 19, 2024. Um, Mr. Fairbanks? Yeah, welcome. Hi, uh, Stuart Fairbank and Angus McDonald, Gary Sharp and Associates. Uh, we've got a revised plan up on the board. It is the revised site plan, proposed site plan that you have. If anyone would like a full site plan, I have a, a plan. Anybody need a plan? Want to see one? No, okay. So, we made some revisions. In response to the discussion of uh, last uh, three weeks ago, um, primarily it revolves around uh, uh, parking area and landscape area. We also got a floor uh, layout of the of the large building so that we could more accurately break out um, those uh, those spaces. We also supplemented our coverages as far as building coverage, gross floor area existing lot coverage and so forth, landscape area. Those are enumerated on the, you know, on the, uh, on the plan. So we recalculated total uh, spaces required 97. What we see now uh, after, if you recall, one of the questions was, well, counting the, the spaces in the garage and the spaces behind the garage. We also had counted some spaces which weren't at least by the regulations, usable along uh, a couple of the property lines. I think they were along uh, up here, up along Elm Street. Um, we end up now with uh, 71 conforming spaces. Keep in mind, there's also a question about two-way traffic on in between the big building and Elm Street. Elm Street, we've shown that as one way um, through here. There are three spaces behind the garage, but the garage is uh, going to be used as storage. So it isn't a garage, so we didn't count spaces in there. Again, one way traffic through there. The rest of it has 24 foot aisles or more coming uh, around. So we have conforming parking spaces uh, to the tune of uh, there's 71 existing, and we think we can get 72. We did eliminate the two spaces down on uh, a long bus and post road that are halfway in the, um, the state right of way. Um, we supplemented that by increasing island areas there uh, with some landscaping. There's also additional 
landscaping where, uh, as I said, we removed some of the spaces that went down and into a kind of a funny corner along, along Elm Street. That's been opened up. That supplements the landscape, uh, the landscape area. And if I recall, the landscape area goes from like 10, existing 10% up to like 13.6% with 15% being what I believe is the required. So we're closing in on conforming, okay? Still not conforming in all, you know, in both respects, but you gained a little bit, um, you know, no matter how you look at it. So uh, with that, um, let's just go ahead and fire away with the questions. <laughs> the, uh, let's see. The area on the eastern side to the south of the building shows new, new parking spaces and right. the edge of the pavement is different from the existing edge of pavement. Pulled it back a little bit. Pardon? Pulled, we pulled it back a little bit. Yes. So what is to become of the existing pavement that is not part of the new parking yeah, space? Am I pointing to the right spot, Bob? It's Am right. I pointing to the right location? Yeah. This yeah. this location right here? Yes. Okay. That's torn out and that's landscape. Put pavement removed and okay. it goes to grass. And, right. and okay. there is some landscaping shown, but grass primarily. Right. I'm just we're just squaring it up. Now this is uh, a considerable improvement over the the earlier. Uh, site plan with regard to the not reducing non-conformities and increasing uh, landscape area. Do we have a, a percent landscaping on the site? Yeah, I think it, that's, uh, it goes from 10 to, I think it's 13.6 is what we're calculating now. Per post. Yeah, so it's per less, less non-conforming. Yeah, more conforming, less non-conforming. Yep. The, uh, the the so-called parallel spaces up against the uh, are gone. Uh, yeah, are there spaces that are still those there? are gone those are gone, gone. right there are, there gone. are others near the dumpster in the corner well they're not the in the north side of the line. yeah those these are gone here the the pavement gets pulled back to here so even though you can still see them it's because it's an overlay. So here's where the edge of the pavement is now. These are those spaces, but this now goes like this yeah. is now. So that's where we're gaining the landscaping. It's right. Like pulling that up. So no, yeah. those aren't yeah. there now. Right. Are, are there still any parallel spaces there near that dumpster? No. No. Right. Okay. This is this is good compared to the site layout plan. Is an improvement. Commissioner, oh, um, are signs part of your discussion here this evening? It wasn't going to. They were approved by uh, ARB. Well, they were um, the directional they, they were signs. The they they allocated the responsibility for directional signs to the zoning commission. Mm -hmm. Which would have been ours by default anyway. Yeah, and so we we do have a couple of you know uh, directional signs like you know do not enter and so forth. This way, do not enter and the and striping and things. The um, um, photographs that I got of proposed signs, uh, and I got multiple copies of the same thing. <laughs> Retaining the two on-site pylon signs, even though as even though that the fact that it is a single lot, only one pylon sign would ordinarily be permitted. So yeah, that's, that's maintaining a, that non-conforming. Yeah, that's the uh, Yes. Yeah. And um, has there been a final determination as to the metal top and or uh, height of the signs? That seemed to be under discussion. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think we were planning on cutting the sign down. I think they put the metal tops on the existing sign, but not cut it down. All right. Then uh, photographs that I, I want to just add one thing while we're just on the signs. Uh, David Flynn 
Um, the graphics on the pylon sign now are multicolored. They're all uh, you know different, representing each tenant's colors, color scheme. And you know, I know some. It might be a little classier looking, a bit more elegant if all of them are one color. If we go to all you know black and white for each tenant logo throughout you know on the on the pylon sign. And that's something we're considering. I'm wondering if the commission likes that concept. Okay. And the, uh, with regard to the directional signs mentioned by ARB, I, I think I saw a photograph of a sign that, that said goodwill. But, do you have that on? Yeah. Well, I think when you say directional, I think there's signs that each, there's signs on each business. Yeah, that one. Uh, no, that's on the big sign. No, those are the there, big was, signs. Wasn't there a no. uh, an additional no. 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 Like no. brown sign? No. no. But you're you're correct that each one of them has their own sign. They each have their own business sign on the facade, up on the, the roof. You know, up on the roof. Line. Right, but uh, on the earlier site plan, there was a brown sign on the Elm Street side of the lot. Is there no sign there any longer? I I want to good, the a goodwill directional sure sign of some sort? Um, oh, oh, I, I don't recall. Yeah, I don't recall us putting one there, but if that's what you, you know, if that's something you want, I think we can do that. Yeah, there's a, there's, where you see uh, that? On the easternmost side of the, uh, the pointy corner of the, of the lot, there are words outside oh, directional outside, outside thank you there yeah. are words outside the property line reading from the bottom and yeah. up first is proposed handicap ramp then a directional yeah. sign that points to nothing yeah that's that came off of the sidewalk plans that uh, jacobson associates did if you that's why the sidewalk the graphics of the sidewalk the are different there now. Built, yeah. those those came off of his plan that's his directional sign i don't know what it says all right but that's there's nothing. Not ours. That's not you're, ours. you're not proposing any directional signs at that location. No, that's, that's in the town right of Right. Yeah, that's the town sign. All right. But are you asking so, for one? Is that what you'd like, or are you? Well, no, I'm just asking because of the ARB mentioned that the zoning commission would essentially handle any directional signs. Yeah. So are there any directional signs for special specifically for the goodwill tenant? Other than uh, there, we understand that there is a sign on the building on two sides and there's uh, signs on the pylon sign as well. Yeah. Are there any right. other signs pertaining to goodwill? Do you want a sign on the side of goodwill? Or? No, we no. Yeah. no, so no, no. yeah. <laughs> All right, then uh, this, I appreciate the uh, improvement in the site plan. I have still have a question that I recall bringing up at the earlier mm -hmm. meeting with regard to the statement of use. Is there an updated statement of use as part of this application that supersedes the one received at no. the last zoning commission meeting? No, what All was right. the question? All right, so... Um, we covered why this is a uh, special exception application. It's, uh, it's in the pedestrian node for one, that's enough. But uh, as a special exception application, and therefore in section 32, the B2 district, on the, left, the last page, prior to 32.10, prior to the approval of any application for a certificate of zoning compliance for a special exception, the uh, use permitted under the section, the site plan and special exception application will be submitted to and approved by the commission. And the previous 32.9 regulation is site plan prior to approval of any application for a certificate of zoning compliance for permitted use under this section, a site plan will be admitted to and approved by the commission. And so we look to see what's required in a statement of use. 
And in section 3.3.1 part A, it says a, a written statement signed by the applicant and by the owner, if different from the applicant, describing the nature and extent of the proposed use or occupancy in sufficient detail to determine compliance with the use provisions of these regulations. And all we have is on our agenda, it says goodwill drop-off center. Well, it's also, because, also been called a goodwill donation center. Well, it, it is a donation center, it's not a drop-off center, it's a donation center. Yes. And, 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 you know, all we're doing here is to reiterate, all we're doing is moving one tenant from the shopping center to another space, and we're filling, we're backfilling the existing space. And both of the new tenants are less, um, you know, no, my question, my question has to do with the proposed use that's going to be in the portion of the larger building that has been called a Goodwill Donation Center. Local knowledge here in, in this part of Connecticut, in East Lyme, there is a Goodwill Attended Donation Center. There is. So that, that East Lyme location is exactly the same as what is happening here. All right. it's, a, it's a retail Sure, I actually and the, and the goodwill is out in, it's right. within a small shopping center. Right. The um, goodwill location in Clinton different. is a goodwill donation center and a retail store. Mm -hmm. And so this one has no retail component. Is that correct? Well, it's a retail, they call it a retail kiosk. So they have like like many businesses now, they want to have the you know, we talked about this a bit, they want to have the frontage, they want to have the sign. And they have two employees that are there and they process things and they accept. So them. someone could walk in off the street and make a retail purchase yeah, no. as an individual without dropping off anything. Well, no, but Goodwill could do that if they wanted to. And under my lease, they could if they wanted to sell retail at a location. Is there a choice? Well, the statement of use needs, needs to reflect more that, that there would be a retail function in the goodwill space in the larger building. At present, there's nothing on paper that says retail. And among the uses permitted in section 32, where this property is, it, it, um, section 32.0, the purpose is to sustain and enhance existing central shopping center areas consisting of anchor retail shopping, with small attached complementary stores and combined parking, as well as regional based services tailored toward individuals. Applicable standards require new business development and renovation of existing business sites to improve and enhance the overall aesthetic context of the existing centers and scale in harmony with the town of Old Sabrum. 32.1.1 a store or other building or structure where goods are sold or service is rendered primarily at retail. And the, if we don't, we don't have a specific definition of retail in our regs, so we fall back on a dictionary definition of retail to sell in small quantities directly to the ultimate consumer. That's what is allowed in the B2 district. And I don't see that a goodwill donation attended donation center or a drop-off center is the same thing as retail. And I don't see that it's otherwise on the list of permitted uses in the B2 district. And then we get back to section 6.6.1 .6 regarding uses. Land buildings and other structures in any district may be used for one or more of the uses listed as permitted in the district. Uses listed as special exception uses are permitted in the district subject to the approval of the Commission or Board of Appeals as specified to further assist in the interpretation of permitted uses. Certain uses are listed as prohibited in a district, even though the listing of uses prohibited is not intended to be exhaustive, any use not specified as permitted in the district is prohibited. Why is a donation drop-off center 
So that okay. applied so, for yeah. if it's not on the list of permitted uses. Okay. So if he amends his statement of use, he said that under his lease, they're able to do retail sales. That's part of what they would be able to do. If we amend statement of use to indicate that retail sales will be part of what they're doing there. Then can we get a, a breakdown on the square footage of the gross floor area to determine what the principal use and, uh, and accessory, if any use within the GFA for this tenant could be located? Because a statement of use is, is, to pro is, is to provide sufficient detail to determine compliance with the use provisions. Well, you're saying within the goodwill building, within the goodwill uh, area? Uh, so we just made the engineer a fortune to go and just measure every space like you want. My, my concern is that a donation center is not retail mm -hmm. and it's not a permitted use. And so if you're going to have a portion of the building committed to a use which is not permitted in the district and it is subsidiary to an otherwise permitted use retail, I would like to see the breakdown of the square footage of within, between within, retail and the donation function. Within, within their 3,000 square foot block is what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, and it's something we certainly can do, but if I may. Uh, for, for the record, I'm Alan Kerner on council for the applicant. Can you spell um, your last name, please? Uh, K-O-E-R, and like Nancy E-R. And Mr. Chairman, I am concerned because we were at a previous hearing on this matter. Why was this issue not raised at that time when we could have come back with a with a Can you speak more? up a little? I'm sorry. Why was this issue not raised at the last there, hearing? There was a lengthy discussion at the last meeting, whether this was retail or the question of wholesale, which is not allowed. And we were told at that time there was no retail. No, 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 no. the question was retail or warehouse. Right. You thought it was warehouse. You, you, you thought, thought, you thought it was warehousing was specifically prohibited. You thought it might be a warehouse, and we explained why. Could be a warehouse why, we don't, why we don't feel like it, it's, it's a warehouse use. But there was no discussion about retail sales mm -hmm. at this location. There, there at was, the last there, was there, there was no discussion at the last meeting of the, <clears throat> the proposed use as a drop off center under his interpretation as a prohibited use. Well, I'm looking why, at why didn't you raise it at the last time? I recall asking for an updated statement of use. Yeah. I recall yeah. saying that the statement of use provided, undated yeah. though it may be, told us what was there in the past and what was there in the present, but it didn't specify Not the uses sense. proposed that were yeah. different. Yes, Mr. In, Chairman, in, in particular, a use involving goodwill and specifically prohibited in the B2 district under section 32.3.3 .3 is warehousing and wholesale businesses. Now, just, just for the record, the picture- That's prohibited. Me. That's not even up for variance. It's, it's, it's my turn to talk, please. Okay. The picture that I'm submitting is a photograph of the donation center at East Lyme. It's in a very similar property to the subject property. If you can look at it, I don't think it's anything that the town would be not happy to have. And it's, and it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a question of what it's going to look like. And I'm you sure it's going to be very attractive. There's, there's never been a question relative to that. Is what is the use? Okay. Well, then, can the use it? Let, let me, let me under, under the lease, they can use it for retail. We, they we don't know that. The statement, the, the statement of use dated April 3rd of 2024 does not mention anything of that sort. The statement of use is incomplete. Okay, so, 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 okay. 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 Like so are you, if you, let's just say that the lease permits the tenant to do retail. So can you explain this how it's retail? I think, so right. after the meeting, I spoke with your client and we talked about amending the statement of use because I didn't think either the commission was convinced that it's retail. So I think the thing that you need to do is explain how this is, how a donation center is a retail use for the sale and purchase of goods. I think that's where we are. So how is, how is the donation center retail? 
I think well, that's I, what you I, need I, to convince I, I the commission good, of. Well, I think Goodwill is going to be permitted to sell goods that retail in the store. What is and their current there. intent? Well, their current intent is specified in the lease, what they're permitted to do. It's not specified in the statement of use. I just amended that. No, you did, because we have nothing on, in paper. You're verbally identifying that as a change, but we do not have something in writing. And part of the application process is that a statement of use has to be in written format, which is fine. If you're, if you're going to amend that, then we need to get that from you. Section 3.3.1 specifies a statement of use, a written statement. I don't want to hear more talk about what should be uh, in, in, in their own well, mind. If, if, we take, if, we, if we take five and write out nothing, what the, you know, what the modification is as far as what goodwill will, you know, will be able to do. The use. Yeah, I'm saying if we write that out, we write down something and and submit it. Would that be okay as an amendment to the statement of use for the purposes of our hearing tonight? And then Sorry, assuming you, you know, you move on it, then we come back with it incorporated into the in sufficient detail to determine compliance with the use provisions of these regulations, including section and, 32. And and I think what you've identified as the determinant in making it compliant is how much of that might be uh, allocated for retail versus the storage of the goods that come in the front door. In terms of gross floor area, that would be uh, a means of addressing this. And if it's less than 50% retail, then it's a warehousing or wholesaling business to bring goods in for resale in the future at different locations because under section 32.3.4, research labs, manufacture, processing, or assembling of goods would be permitted. Um, well, they, I'm sorry, they, they would be prohibited except as permitted under 32.1.6. And 32.1.6 says manufacture, processing, or assembling of goods for sale only on the present premises. Or at, re or at retail, right? If there are no more than three persons engaged in the manufacturing, processing, or assembly. And so processing, bringing donations in, would only be allowed if there's retail on the site. And that's only permitted on the list of uses in section 32, if there are no more than three people engaged in the processing. So, so said, your statement of use would have to reflect the number of people at work in the section of the building, which is, is dedicated to the use of processing goods that are not sold in that building at retail. You're definite, you're definite the dictionary? Pardon? Where are you reading that from? I'm reading said, section 32.1.6. What, what you're talking about does not encompass the majority of tenants. We have tenants at shopping or, centers that do wholesale. I know, but we're specifically looking at this, yeah, but this, this is spot. A, but I understand that. Okay. And okay. we're going to resolve that. that right. Or, that's what we're trying to do. A larger, I mean, I have other property in Old School York, and we have. It doesn't apply I'm going to say okay. we have other tenants who may be a florist, and all they do is wholesale. They, don't, they won't sell if you walk in the door, they won't sell you a, a dozen roses. They, they could be classified as wholesale. I mean, they, all these tenants do different things. Of course, we all understand what a warehouse is, what a, what a warehouse looks like, what a wholesale operation looks like in an industrial park. That's not what, practically speaking, any of this is. These are tiny spaces. These are 3,000 square foot, 1,500 square foot spaces. Processing of goods would be taking goods in and then doing something to send them out for sale at retail somewhere else. That seems to me to be what this donation center does, at least in part. If some of the goods donated end up for a retail sale in the same yeah, building. A lot of tenants, I'd say more than 25% of the tenants I have everywhere uh, uh, right now, I mean, this retail is evolving, right? We have tenants that the majority of their business is online sales. So, I mean, is there a definition for that? This is, they're selling 80% of their goods online. <clears throat> this is processing of goods in the building. That's There's businesses that take pictures of products 
that they're going to put on eBay or they're going to sell for you. That's process. That's not happening in the building. I'm talking about the use in the building here on this site. Yeah. The activities that take place within the building are regulated as to permitted or prohibited or permitted with conditions such as processing of goods. And the processing of goods in terms of what your statement of use, if you're saying you're doing that as a use, your processing of goods for, for sale only on the premises or at retail is, is allowed there only if there are no more than three persons engaged in the processing. And so your statement, you should specify that there will not be more than three employees engaged in the processing of materials, which will be sold at retail in on site in the same building. That's correct. Right. Then your statement of use should reflect that. That's what the regulations specify. I don't have that in the statement of use that we received uh, at the last meeting. It's it's stapled to a CCC application sheet, but on the statement of use itself, there is the it's got April 3rd as the date. All right. So that's the one I'm referring to. That does not have anything about the uses to be conducted, proposed in the part of the building to be used by goodwill. That's required in our regulations. So you want to and this statement of use does not. So you answer. primarily want to understand and you want it to be documented that there will not be three, not be more than more three engaged in the processing of goods to be sold at retail. Retail is the key. Okay. Is it retail or is it not retail? If it's retail, it's allowed. If it's not retail and it's a processing or it's warehousing, it's not allowed in the B2 business. It's limited. Yeah. Okay. To it's period. Limited. Period. We can't always, by the way, this is more of a global concern. We, we cannot always, I mean, listen, we're, to, to some extent, we're not regulating and policing everything every one of our small businesses and our properties is doing. Well, I'm sure practically yeah. speaking, you understand that. I understand so, that. I mean, of course, we, we do police what, you know, if they have junk outside, if they have... Well, those, you know, you obviously, that's a concern of ours, that if there's not a retail center and things are being dropped off, how are they going to yeah. be handled well, I, on I have, the weekend? I have more to discuss that okay. as well. I looked into that, but that was a concern. I talked to them more about that as well. How are the goods, once processed inside, how are they going to be removed from the facility? So all we're asking for is detail. All right, well, well, we have now here. we're back here again a second time. Well, Ten, we're tens of thousands of dollars on we, we Just have, to have tenants around, which in any other town in Connecticut, we don't do any of this. We, I, no, they, well, Oak Saber's regulations are pretty clear on this. Well, we just Your to statement of use is deficient. It, it would be called incomplete. And one of the requirements in several parts of our regulations, especially section 51 that I referred to last time, requires that an application be complete. Yeah. This statement of use is not complete. It's not a question that this town or nor this commission members don't want what you're proposing in town. Your, your facial expressions may show something different. We're, we're here to work with you, but there's requirements in, that we have to maintain as part of our responsibilities, and we're asking for it. So we're asking for a clarity of what is it, okay? Is it there's no retail? or there is retail. What is the percentage of retail? You have three or less um, employees located in there. How are goods gonna be removed from the facility? Then we understand and we can adequately make a decision that would be in support of the town guidelines and in support of you as a business owner. That's all we're asking for. I think that's pretty clear and I think it's pretty simple. Um, Mr. Chairman, what's your pleasure at this point? I mean, we need to amend. I, I, we, I don't we need have to amend the statement of use. I, I personally would like to again reiterate that this really should have been raised at the last meeting so that we could have corrected the statement of use and brought it back in. The, the statement of use was discussed at the last meeting. Yeah, but, but from not, my not, 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 not this issue, I, I, not this issue. I mentioned this. Yes, it was as mentioned as not I, being current. And did not include what was proposed. It only listed what was there in the past and what is there in the present. It did not include what is proposed. Okay. The, there, there's no real point in debating. Just to be My clear, is, I did send your client 
a statement of use form and I yeah. sent him a detailed statement of use with all of this outline. After the last meeting, I brought this up to your client in a conversation that I thought this was still a concern. He said, no, it's retail. So I've tried to coach you through this to tell you that this is an issue. I believe it was an issue at the last meeting and we're still here with the same questions mm -hmm. and, a, and a statement of use that's not in detail. In my understanding from the last meeting, my interpretation that we talked about that concept and moved on to that and the larger concerns were primarily Mr. Friedman's concerns, which were the site, you know, the actual site plan stuff that Stuart uh, uh, Fairbank worked on and resolved. I thought that, you know, the beautification of the property and all of the money we're going to be spending to do this stuff to make it look pretty was the primary concern of the town. And, and I thought we resolved the issue. And it. following that meeting, I did bring it to your attention you that I was still concerned about the statement of use. And you said, no, it's handled, it's retail. <clears throat> it wasn't handled, and I said that to you, and we're still here having the same conversation. So, Mr. Chairman, what, what's your pleasure in terms of how it's your decision? Please. It's your decision. We don't. We're not making a decision for you. That's not the role of this commission. I, I'd like your guidance. I think what was been stated in the last twenty-five minutes is so pretty you're, clear. You're, so, do we have the ability to adjourn the meeting and amend the statement of use and resubmit it tonight, or do well, I, have to I, I adjourn the meeting and come back at a later date? We, we have. We could. We could continue it if you gave us approval to continue it because it has to be decided upon by May 19th. Are you asking for us to amend our agenda to uh, continue this at no, the I'm end of May? I think what I'm asking you to do is to adjourn the meeting now and give us, so, a, give so us the if, opportunity to amend this and resubmit it so that we can do this today. So what if we just tabled the matter, go on yeah, to the next item, and that's fine. Following the next agenda item, you can come back and provide your amended statement of use. Yeah, could I have a copy of the statement of use? Sure. So that we can Can I say something? Yes. Yeah, sure. Please. Yes. yes. You're speaking on behalf, you're making a change in terms of what Goodwill is going to do. Goodwill, up until this point, has a donation center. Now you're yeah, adding the retail component. Yeah. Yeah. Can you speak? Can you commit to what Goodwill is going to do? Well, good, 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 good Goodwill has a lease that permits retail and donation center. Right. Right. So what I'm going to do in my change here is make it clear that this is what the tenant has asked for and is permitted to do. But yeah. if Goodwill could put a commit to that, does we don't know. You wouldn't mind if I could. Well, this is, this is any, I, I got to assume as a fellow who's written leases for 40 years that when a tenant puts a use in a lease, because they want to they make sure they have that ability to do that. So is Goodwill? Is Goodwill going to do that? Right. That's the question that, that yeah. Brenda is asking. You can, you can put it in a statement as use, but is it, what is Goodwill actually going to do? Are they going I, to I, be I, a retail I, I mean, that, that's, that's sort of a question of, of asking me to control what the tenant's going to do with the space. That's a, that's a tough one because they, tenants evolve, tenants change. But Goodwill, as you well know, has lots of retail locations. So I would be surprised if they didn't really have some retail in this location where people are coming in. Okay, right. So, why, so would, why wouldn't they want to have goods for retail? I, I have no idea. Well, that's not right. Mm -hmm. I, well, they put them in the lease that they could. They asked for the retail portion. Yes, that, that's a permitted. That's a permitted use under their lease. It sounds a little different. So, but so, and, I, and it's common it's sense. It's I'm it's looking for compliance with the regulations yeah. regarding the materials submitted as part of an application. Described fully in section 51 and, and elsewhere. But in section 3.3.1, part A, there's a description of the statement of use and what it entails, and, re, and is, it is to describe the nature and extent of the proposed use or occupancy in sufficient detail to determine compliance with the use provisions of these regulations. Section 32 applies because it's going to be too different. I appreciate that. That's the, the same, term that's the same regulation you read previously. Thank you. 
So you, you turn, so so I have to amend the statement of use just to turn, try and bring it into compliance yeah, it, with your regulation. Well, it does not appear to me as one commissioner to describe the extent of the post use in sufficient detail to determine compliance with the use provisions of section 32 in particular. And section uh, I, I, under, I understand your position is that this present statement of use is deficient. Are you are you judging the statement of use as amended that I haven't given you yet? No, we're not doing okay. That. All right. Then so you, so, so agree to you go Ta table, side, table this table it so late, later oh, this goodness. evening and come back with a, a written okay. statement of use. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to new business, uh, a preliminary discussion, existing residents proposed barn arch architectural use and farm stand at 177 Springbrook Road, map 58, lots 26 and 27-1, residents AA-1 district, applicant Zachary Tushman, did I pronounce that right? Sorry, no, sorry. No, thank you. Well, good evening. Good evening, John. I haven't seen you like so first and foremost, I'd like to apologize for all the disarray and unrest I've caused across town. Um, I know it's been a massive, massive clearing undertaking. Um, the the whole reason for it, I have a bit of a bigger picture for uh, a proposed farm. That's what I'm. Can you just speak? Yeah, I'm minutes. sorry. I'm I'm looking to propose a farm. Um, I have two little girls, five and three. Um, I'm trying to teach them how we can live off the land and give back to the community. Um, I'd also like to have a little farm stand on the property as well as the proposed barn. Um, the farm stand, I would like to be like a self-serve type deal, something where the stuff is out, people can leave money in, you know, like a, a type of money box or something like that. Um, you know, as the girls get older, their presence, you know, will be more and more, you know, at the sand, you know. Doing this and that, and you know, for for the rest of the property where the, where the barn is not, I would like it to either be nice green pasture or the areas where we would just grow corn, vegetables, tomatoes. Can't hear. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You're having a hard time hearing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. like, like sure. So yeah, that's I guess that's the the suggestion. We we would like to have um, twenty chickens, maybe a couple goats, and that, that was all we were looking for. The, your uh, letter to the commission, yes, indicated um, the animals, the gardening, in um, different various crops. Yep. Okay, and a. Um, uh, home for the chickens. Yes, a group right. more located in my yard, and, and then a a barn, and then the barn, and in the, the barn would be to yes. store the equipment, equipment, any kind of stuff for the farm. Um, my my personal vehicles, mm -hmm. um, any of my my mower, my tractor, mm -hmm. or stuff like that. That all relate to the operation of yes, the, exactly. of, of the property. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Not equipment that would be used for your various businesses that would be. Brought in there and repaired or no. handled in, in any type of no. I have, I have I have an excavator mm -hmm. and it's always on job sites. If it wasn't on a site, I would hope that could be a home for it, mm -hmm. just to keep it safe and locked up. We have people doing all sorts of stuff. So it's not to be a repair. No, 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 absolutely not. Just storage, just purely my personal storage. Yeah. And there's a, a mention of a, a farm stand. Yes, closer to the road. Okay. Yeah. Um, how would you envision the road stand? And where would it be located? And would it have a off-road access to um, uh, for cars? Because that's a very difficult corner there. Absolutely. So I propose a big driveway to the barn. And I'd like the parking for the farm stand to be off. If you're looking, I guess at the, it would be on the left side. Mm -hmm. And the, the parking will basically be on that left side of the of the of the driveway. So there'd be a pull off. It'd be a huge road. area to pull in. Yeah, it'd be 
very easy to pull in. Um, I'd like to keep it, you know, within variance, closer to the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously, with whatever you know is within regulation. I'm just looking at public safety. Totally, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't want cars parked on the side of the road. Right. Yeah, no, they are more than welcome to pull into. I mean, I'll stack them all in my in my whole driveway if, if they ever wanted to. I don't care. They, I don't want them on the road. And it'll. I'll. I would like to have signage that would say parking with an arrow, you know, so it's evident and obvious people aren't just pulling off on the side of the road, you know, because I get enough of that as is. <laughs> uh, commissioners have any other the, uh, questions? <clears throat> this is in the AA1 district. It's residential. Okay. You've combined the lots. There's only yes. one. There's only one lot. Yes, it's now one. Of so them. Um, it can't be more than one dwelling unit. Mm -hmm. According to the regs mm -hmm. in uh, section 22.1.2, uh, two, you're allowed to have a home business. And in 22.1.7, you're allowed to have a farm, including a roadside stand. And in 22.1.9, accessory use is customary and incidental to permitted uses. So, incidental and permitted to the use of, as a house, a dwelling unit on the lot. You could have a garage. What you're talking about is a really big garage. It's my dream. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and, and so, yeah. in in that sense, it's a it, it's a little bit out of the ordinary. It absolutely is. Do you guys have the picture of what it'll look like? Of what I would propose it to look like? I can pass it around. No, we just have the oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought that I included the. Well, it's a the concern for the. Uh, AA1 residential district would be that uh, if your personal or anybody else's heavy equipment no, no. is yeah. inside the building, yes, then it's just they see the building. Absolutely. There should be no outside store no, absolutely relating not. to the home business whatsoever. No, I want it to be a nice clean cut park. Like you drive by and you know it's a park. And so that's I have again local knowledge on Pepperidge Trail. There's a, an excavator or backhoe in the yard. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't keep my equipment on. I don't store my equipment on my property. It's like it's not even on site anymore. It was only there for the clearing. Let's see. And with regard to chickens, they're regulated in section 53. Yep. And uh, you can't have more than 20 chickens, and and unless it's tied to the Square footage of the acreage above and beyond 80,000 square feet, and then you're limited to a total of three. And additional, and, and livestock, Thanks. I guess livestock would, would be goats. Yeah. And so, uh, are you allowed to have goat? Like, if I wanted to go, well, it's tied to the number of chickens. We're, we're oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> Whatever you guys say I can do is, is all I'm looking to go. Um, so, yeah. But there's a uh, there's livestock and poultry are discussed in section 53. Uh, so I recommend that you familiarize yourself with that. And, uh, and then. Yeah, this is all down the road too. I'm not like going to get chickens tomorrow or anything like that. It's going to take me at least yeah. until next summer to get this place fully grown grass, everything like that. You know, all the firewood's almost cleaned up. We're, we're chipping away at that. Um, yeah, it's been an undertaking. It's just been me that's done it all. So I, I, I've done it completely wrong. So it's, I'm, like again, I, I'm, I'd like to say I'm sorry for any kind of distress I caused. I know I know people are probably wondering what development's being built there, what condo complex, or, but that was never my intention. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to come and speak to us. Yeah, thank no, you. Thank you for having us. Us as well as your neighbors, an indication of what uh, your plans are. Absolutely. Um, uh, you seem uh, reasonable and, and cooperative um, in, in terms of being uh, I appreciate that. straightforward with what your intent is. Uh, obviously, the commission is uh, here to uh, review and maintain uh, what's in, in these binders to make sure that everything is, Absolutely. is compliant. Um, uh, what's and and the fact that you this is a preliminary discussion it's not a formal uh, or an application of any sorts uh, to get a clear understanding as to what the intent is and in, uh, uh, of your property which I think is 
been clearly defined. Uh, if commissioners have other questions, please bring them forward. Um, uh, we don't need to involve public access uh, discussion at this point, but uh, the fact that uh, it is on the agenda, we did advertise it. And if there's anyone here from the public that would like to speak in favor of or in opposition to it, we would ask you to speak up at this point and identify who you are uh, and uh, with your comments. Yes. Sharon. Uh, my name is Sharon Baldy. I live at 145 Springbrook mm -hmm. uh, next door. Um, I'm assuming that you all got my letter and have read it. Yes. yes. Um, I want to say that I was very upset with what happened. My Mr. Tuckman works very hard. I saw him out there all winter. I heard it all winter. Um, I just come at it from a different point of view, that's all. I, I, I hope that he can grow a farm. Um, I have a degree in biology. I have a couple of master's degree, work as a naturalist. So unfortunately, you know, I, I believe in the trees and uh, as, as a past educator and administrator, um, I just, um, I hope that it works out for him, but I need to keep myself safe. Um, I'm having trouble getting out of my driveway. There's brush in the way I can't see. Some of it's been moved back. Um, so I thank Mr. Tuckman for doing that. It's a bad corner to begin with. I've lived there for 38 years. And as I stated in my letter, um, my grandfather, and my father built a lot of the churches and stuff in town. They were stone masons. And um, I was very upset when a part of my wall was damaged. Um, I like to get that repaired. I can't get in there to do it myself right now because there's too much brush in the way. And I would hope that Mr. Tuffman would um, do the right thing and move some of that brush back so I could either fix it myself or get a couple of my railroad friends that I work with at the S16 train to help me. Um, it's very important to me that the legacy of my family um, stays intact, that whatever is done in that property. Um, my grandmother and grandfather lived there and were friends of the people in the 40s and 50s that lived on that property. So over the years, I tried to clean up the trash and tried to make it look nice. Um, I have nothing against Mr. Tuckman at all. As I said before, I. I know that he works hard. I saw him out there working, and I respect hard work because that's how I was brought up. But I am very concerned for my safety getting out of my driveway and the traffic, especially in the summer with all the people going up to the racket club. It's a bad corner to begin with. And as long as uh, a driveway is put in away from that corner, uh, I have no problem with that. I, I commend him for trying to do a. Um, a garden or a farm. Uh, I have just questions about the impact of the soil right now. Uh, with pulling up a lot of the stuff, it's it's uh, it's going to have a lot of work ahead of them. That's all. Thank you for your time. And uh, like I said before, I'm just looking to protect the legacy of my family who grew up and uh, did a lot of work here in town. Thank you. Is there any, uh, anyone else wishing to speak you know, in the audience or online? We have one hand raised. Carolyn, would you like to speak? Oh, isn't that Sarah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carolyn. Yeah. Carolyn, are you able to hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me? Hi, my name is Carolyn Lyle. I am in, uh, started an organization called SOS Trees, Save Our Trees. We're a community group of over 50 people who are really worried about the old saber tree canopy. We have the lowest tree canopy on the shoreline. We have the second lowest tree canopy in Middlesex County. Uh, and the clearing of the acreage is really done a damage to our tree canopy. So Mr. Tushman, I would just implore you to plant trees. I mean, that's my main uh, goal is to help you plant trees. Uh, we'd like to see you contribute to that tree canopy with that size acreage and with the clearing of uh, mature trees that contributed to the community welfare. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, you have a good robust plan to replace a lot of those trees. 
So um, that's my request. And to the Zoning Commission, I'm hoping that you can support uh, the establishment of a tree committee so that the town has a tree management forestry community plan. Um, but that's, uh, I'm speaking for the trees and for the town's community interest and the stewardship that we all share uh, for the trees in our town and the benefits that it brings to our community, to everybody. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else online? Okay. Would you care to comment on anything that you've heard from the audience? Yeah, so as far as the rock wall goes, there was two rocks about this big that got chipped. <laughs> I plan on putting those back. It's just the brush that's about to be chipped is sitting there right now. Um, I do plan on putting trees. I actually wanted to do a line of arborvitaes in front of the wall on my side, so that way those can grow nice and tall and make a nice new barrier from the highway and everything like that kind of contribute to a noise barrier in a sense. So you'll you'll work with the property owner on their wishes relative to the stone wall. The the two the two rocks. It's it's actually my it's my property line. But you'll have conversation. Line, you'll yeah, need to get I'll, into detail. I'll have it fixed. You'll have yeah. conversations that adequately yep. uh, takes care of the concern. Absolutely. And you'll work with Carolyn. Absolutely. On, on yeah. Yeah. I plan on getting a tree at their event. On, okay. I believe. So the twenty fourth. It's coming out this year. Yeah, it's coming out. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I did quite well. fencing would be another matter. If you have any kind of fencing in mind, mm -hmm. please work with Chris Costa, oh, of the course. zoning enforcement officer, Absolutely. with regard to uh, location, size, height, mm -hmm. and and other details. Perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. Chris. So we're getting a little off track of the preliminary discussion. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so part of the reason I mentioned this to you, I believe it was staff report up from the last meeting, uh, was that we had a variety of uses. So out of the uses, um, we've got AA1. Right. You have a single family residential <clears throat> use. You have a farm. And this would fall, my understanding would be as a special exception with the roadside stand. I'm just trying to figure out where this all falls. There's a variety of uses here. It would, it would appear that the, the overriding use is a farm with self-serve farm stand. And the okay. and the garage as an accessory use on a single family lot. Well, I, I guess the question is because of the size of the garage, but it's also affiliated with the farm. Yeah. Right. Is a farm? What was it? Fifty-four <laughs> by. Fifty-eight by one hundred. Fifty-two by a hundred is a pretty big. Yeah. Accessory structure. Yes. So yes. is that kind of a, a combination standalone structure? And then going back to the uses, I was hoping we would discuss a little bit the acreage and the setbacks to give the applicant some guidance. I know he's kind of like, well, if you want fewer or more animals or however that works, I'm just trying to help guide the applicant now. I understand that the trees was it was a devastating act um, to many people, but the property owner did come in and ask if they needed a permit to cut those trees. Um, there was no permit required for that. Is in the cam? It's not in the um, cam. Right. It's not in the gateway. No. no. Okay. So those don't apply. Right. So going to the livestock and poultry. Looking at the definition in section nine for home business as preparation and sale of those products customarily produced in the home garden or farm, such as home baking, needlework, fruits, produce, home preserves provided that the products are created entirely on the premises. Preparation and sale of the products of arts and crafts, 
painting, illustrating, wood carving, cabinet making, ceramics, writing, sculpture, ornament, glass, metal working, provided that the products are created entirely on the premises, a conduct of a business office. So if your heavy equipment could ostensibly be used as farm equipment, then one could see that it could be stored in the building. I don't plan on keeping it there a lot. I don't plan on keeping it there a lot. It's just like if I have if I have nowhere else to put it, I would like to be able to store it there. That's that's all that I have. And that would be unrelated to uh farm. Yeah, unless I needed it for something that I was doing at the farm, like excavating or something for a garden bed or something. But I that would be that would be short term use. So that would be that wouldn't be like it staying there forever, hanging outside. It would never hang outside. What was the total acreage again? Sorry, I can't read this little map. Uh, three three point two. Three five three. Right, that's yeah, the first that's one. Right. So you have two points. Combined. The sign. Oh, three point. Three point two five. Three point two nine two. Three point two nine. Yeah, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess going to livestock and poultry. Some fighting. Yeah. So you've got 143,312 square feet, which is less than the five acres. Mm -hmm. So on a lot of not less than 80,000, one animal unit, one equine bovine, the 20 chickens, I believe this trips the special permit. Section 1. Livestock and poultry. Livestock and poultry. 53. Oh, livestock. 53. 53, yeah. The total. <coughs> it seems to come back always to the total square footage of the lot. Yeah. yeah. And the number of animals stored in the building. Doesn't say which building or, or a single building, but there's the uh, a number of buildings, then the total number of animals stored in a building doesn't matter which building or here, there, or how many buildings, it's the total number of animals. <coughs> And there's an upper limit in the AA1 district tied to the square footage of the lot. So looking at the site plan <coughs> in the letter that was provided. I believe it's a special exception, but I'm asking for your guidance based on oh, okay. what was there. And yeah. I know there was a number of concerns with the tree cutting um, and then going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Question. So that's why this is in front of you from the last meeting between right. the 52 by 100 barn, one permitted use accessory or part of the farm, part of the residence with the farm, with the farm stand. Yeah. Mm. So that's why looking at the regulation, that's what I'm seeking some guidance from you. to do some searching that this does not come up off well then that's why we're, we're here because the property owner wants to make an application once and, and do it right would it make it easier if i didn't do a farm stand it doesn't have to do no, with it. it's got to do with the, the bar and the setbacks okay yeah. does the barn need to be 70 feet from the property line <laughs> we'll see now you've got multiple properties that are merged okay with at least two permitted uses, with an accessory farm stand, if the farm and the agricultural use are there. You have less than five acres, but typically, I mean, I don't believe in my, I think we've only had one farm 
that's come through this commission in 20 three, 24 years that I've been here. That's why I'm getting guidance or seeking guidance for it. And that's what I was hoping that you could provide. So no, but no livestock or poultry will be kept on the no, lot. No, because I'm just going to say chicken. I'm sorry. One conversation. So I'm sorry. no livestock or poultry will be kept on a lot of less than five acres. In any building in which livestock or poultry are kept will not extend within less than 150 feet of any property line. Or street line. Mm -hmm. Or street line. Except. On a lot of not less than 80,000 square feet, one animal unit consisting of one equine, bovine, or llama, or up to five goats, or an aggregate of not more than 20 chickens, poultry, or rabbits, may be permitted by special exception use, provided that the building or shelter which the animal is kept is located not less than 70 feet from the street line or property. If it makes any difference, I wasn't planning on putting animals in the actual barn because I was just going to have a chicken coop for the chickens and like goats as a maybe. I don't know if I even want to really do that. Um, but the chickens would just be a chicken coop. Um, and I would like that to be actually in my yard. I believe I drew a, a mm -hmm. red square in there. But that's still the building or enclosure. So if you look at the site plan, and then yeah, we put those 70 feet, 70 feet when we were at the from office. The the yeah, from the street and from the property line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also in section 53, there's also a, uh, an item regarding farm, and that has other things which are not allowed. So. Uh, the farm will not include a commercial piggery, and there will be no commercial slaughtering, fertilizer manufacturing, or any commercial reduction of animal matter. I have no plans for that. So you can't sell the chicken anymore. <laughs> okay. I'll keep that That's it. So since a farm is a permitted use in the AA1 district as of right, and the keeping of animals is described in section 53, and that's limited. I don't see that it's uh, anything other than as of right. The farm stand. Depending on the number. The, the commission would probably want yeah. to see. Depending on the number of animals. Hmm? Depending on the number of animals. Yes, the number of animals is is definitely regulated. And you, you tell me that, and I abide by it. Well, we're trying to see what you yeah. propose. Yeah. That's what we're basically... I propose twenty chickens. Yeah. So, but you've also mentioned. So. I'll go maybe, maybe. Yeah. So yeah, we need definitive. I could just say no on the goat. Yeah. Well, we're asking you what you want. Though, yeah, that's we're asking kind of that. where it is. It's yeah. not yes or no. You can have a goat, you can have a llama, you can have an equine, you can have All a right. bovine. If I'm allowed, if how I'm many allowed, are if I'm allowed you to have a goat, it? I'd like to have one goat. I'm allowed to so have you a want, goat. You want, you want 20, 20, 20 chickens and one goat. 20 chickens and one goat. And, and one goat. And one goat. And no bovine. No, 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 no. no. I, don't, I don't have time for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, absolutely not. That would be as of right, I guess. I'm seeking your guidance. I know, I, it's I, a pretty I, complex application with a very it large is. structure. I'm sorry. It is a very large structure. I just looked at it as a sense of I didn't want to have to add on to something in the future, so I'd rather grow into it. That was kind of my perspective on that. It's just build it once. It's borderline between as right and special exception. Special exception. exception. Right. And I guess over the nature of what we're looking at here and the potential and the location that it might be best if we looked at it as a special exception. That's right. If it trips special. Exception. If it trips it, right. 
commissioners? I or agree with plan. special exception. Or site plan. Plan. Is the position of the barn um, 70 feet from the property lines? I can't tell from this. Um, so it's less than that. I, I, believe it's, like I, believe it's, I believe it was less than that. I moved it another 15 feet forward, which is all the whole as book's going to be updated with my with my guy. He just didn't want so, That would all be part of the application. So that's, yeah, well, no, right, this is yeah, why he's showing right, this yeah, on right, a preliminary right, basis yeah, to right. see if there's anything that yeah. you can provide him with guidance. Right. So we'd have to meet those other requirements that have been stated here by. All right, does the barn have to be 70? Well, if you got animals. Because yeah. I'm not going to put animals in it. A hundred percent, I'm not. I'm absolutely not going to put animals in it. Yeah, then special exception section 52.2 purpose. The second sentence is special exception uses that may be permitted in the district are unusual uses that under favorable circumstances will be appropriate, harmonious, and desirable uses in the district, but that possess the special characteristics that each use should be considered on as an individual case. Well, the combination of uses described thus far it's not specifically uh, listed in the 8A1 as special exception uses. Unless and section 53 trips it. We could hold a public hearing regardless. Yeah. But I don't, this, I'm not this, certain. This is just not your typical application. Right. It's right. A, a, right. a house, a barn, a farm, and, and animals, and equipment, and Right. I just want to make sure so. And the performance standards of section 61, they, uh, smoke, gas, and fumes, and noise, and vibration, and odors are regulated in section 61. And so, yeah, I don't think I'll be introducing them. <laughs> Enough of that. Just one guy. I don't know. Um, but I'll follow whatever regulations there are probably. So other than the regulations that are there, are there any red flags or anything on the site plan that you've seen? I think it, as, as long as there's a farm stand as part of a proposal, I think the commission could ask the applicant to come before with regard to the site plan details in terms of traffic parking, access, uh, safe public safety, and things like that. And yet, otherwise, I think all of the uh, described uses are as of right in the AA1 district. So we're thinking site plan. The size of the building is exceptional. But uh, site plan, I it's I don't see that it's specifically um, outside the realm of possibility in terms of what is permitted, and it's not a use that's not listed as permitted, which would have made it prohibited in section six. So these are permitted uses. I like the idea of a site plan. That's a good idea. So I like the idea of a site. I, I can have that updated. Right. Well, that, that was the that was the question. Is there anything on there that you see right now that before he goes through that process to get the site yeah, plan I together? Finalize it. I mean, I think I feel more comfortable bumping it up to the commission as a site plan because yeah, yeah. they're all allowed uses, but there's a lot of uses and a lot so of think concerns. About the location of the farm stand, the setbacks and that? Yeah, I just need to make sure that I'm within those setbacks and I'll have that all on the updated site plan as well. Does that help you? It helps me. Does it help you Does as it, far as your? Proposal? Yeah. I mean, well, you just need me to give you an updated site plan. And an application with the numbers. An application, like well, the number of animals. So if, okay. if you want to, yeah, I'll go one go. I'm going to put one go twenty chickens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. And three chickens. Yeah, so whatever just, the animals are, just. You just need me to bring you just a new site plan with everything finalized on it, and then the the application. A full statement of use okay. in detail. Okay. 
making clear that there's no business being operated out yeah. of there other than the yeah. farm and the farm stuff. Yeah, that's no problem with me. Okay. okay. I, I can easily bring that. I can get that down before Friday. So it's no problem with me. And please work with Sharon. Yes, I will. I absolutely will. I'll, I'll take yeah. care of the rock. Okay, thank you. Anything else? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. All set. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item D under new business, uh, blue sky application for site plan review for operation of a biochar facility, including the construction of two cooling towers, a concrete pad, construction of an exhaust clean cleansing room, an existing loading dock, two propane tanks on concrete pads and a vaporizer. 35 Research Park, Parkway, Map 39, Lot 5, Industrial. Industrial District applicant Will Hesser. The door locked them out, so we can come back. I thought they were there, Joe. I think he tried that door. Well, it was just a week. Hopefully, it'll be flexible. I know. You can let them finish. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Sorry. I didn't realize they locked that door. Are you sure? Come forward. Okay. Okay, so we have an addendum for the statement of use. Attorney Kerner. Yeah, uh, uh, for the record, this is Alan Kerner. I'm reading an addendum to the statement of use for 707 Boston Post Road. The Goodwill premises will be a combination retail use and donation center. There will be no display of goods or donations permitted on the sidewalk adjoining the premises. Approximately 1,600 square feet of the premises will be dedicated to the retail use. The balance will be dedicated to storage and processing of donated goods. There will be no more than three employees dedicated to processing of donated goods. Donated goods will be removed from the premises on box in box trucks. And this is signed by Mr. Flynn as the manager. Now reflected in the vehicles per day count otherwise provided, but number of box trucks and you said we got we got eight, what eight hundred and forty vehicle trips per day for the school site, and is, does that include the, the box trucks? Yeah, I, I had figured too when I came up with those. I estimated those numbers by literally going over there and sitting in Watt County. You know, early in the morning to get a peak hour count and then estimating, I figured two box trucks a day. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, should be just, you know. So, the, the uh, statement of use that you read also is followed by the 10 hours in exhibit A that you had submitted before for Goodwill, which operates nine to six Monday through Friday. Um, right, right, it'll be you say two employees, no more than three, right? Well, no I more guess, than three. I said, I said no more than three. 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 Because that was the regulation that was cited. So, even though it's the regulation was cited, is that what's going to happen? So, well, will there be the three employees? Because I don't want to end up in a situation. What I, what I said was no more than three employees dedicated to processing. That was what was uh, cited in the regulation that was quoted to us. I think, I know, I, I I think as a practical matter, Goodwill will have less. They're telling us that they're going to have two employees, but I don't want you to go in there and say three and start sending us. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. I just want to make sure that what you're writing doesn't just is what at Goodwill is going to do because I don't want to no, end up in a situation I, where I, we're writing. What I'm writing cannot be exceeded by Goodwill. So if you go in there and see four people dedicated to processing donated items, then you can call Mr. Flynn and, and, and take action. But the regulation appears to say no more than three are permitted. So I'd like to have the maximum of what the regulation permits, please. Okay, no, I don't know. That's fine. I, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. And the, and the hours of Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, will also pertain to any removal of, of uh, donated uh, product yes. Yes, uh, at the same time. And the removal will be by 
I would presume small truck, box, box truck. Box trucks. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Commissioners have anything from what we've just yeah. received? Is that signed and dated? Yes. It is. Great. Is it yep. dated? That's, that's much better. And it's not dated, but it will be. Oh, it is dated. Sorry. Yes, yeah, it is dated. Yep. Yep. So those are the three, right? No, yes. Sure, you may. Can we, can we get a photograph? Uh, yeah, we'll get one. Yeah, yeah we can make a copy. We'll, we'll make a copy. We'll make a copy. We'll make a copy. We'll make a copy. Go ahead, Brenda. When people are coming with the donation, they're going to do it at their convenience. Their convenience is probably going to be the weekend. What happens when people just come and it's closed and stuff is left in the Well, yeah, um, we talked a little bit about this. But I think the question previously was, if, you know, people pulling up. Which we as landlords don't want people pulling up. We don't want people in the, you know, pulling up to the building room in parking spaces. And this was made very clear with Goodwill, um, just from a tenant landlord perspective. But similarly, we don't allow anything outside, nothing to be dropped off or left outside. That would be a, a big problem for us. Okay. And, they, and they've told us that that doesn't occur, and that's in the lease specifically prohibited. So what happens when someone just does that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I mean, what do we do? people, people. I, we have stuff like that happen occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. I would probably in Massachusetts where we have a, a, it's an antique type tenant, and there's stuff that left outside. You know, we have internal. Things we do with send out letters, probably similar to what you've been. Well, doing. I guess I'm, I guess the concern is from an enforcement perspective. Mm -hmm. If there's no one there on Saturday and Sunday, and people are dropping Man, stuff off, yeah, then so, so, how do you stop it? So actually, I, I print out an email here. I can show you from Goodwill telling us how they deal with it. They have signs outside saying we do not permit drop offs. And also, I think in some cases, I, mean, I don't understand your business in depth, but I think people are looking for tax write offs. And I don't think they're they, I don't think they get the you know, paperwork they want, I, I yeah, think, to receive that they would get. But yeah, I mean, anything. Can well, I'm just asking because I, I know you're trying to make your property yeah. look nice and you have a good size. Like and I don't want to end up in an enforcement issue calling you up saying, right. David, there's piles of sure. stuff there and He's people. Walking the handicap ramp or. Anything. I have McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts as tenants, and they're usually good, but every once in a while someone takes a. a, a, a wrapper and everything and tosses it out the window on the ground and we deal with that it's you know sometimes things do happen and we you know try our best to enforce it so you you will manage that on a weekly basis yes and if found would remove would you if found dropped at the door on a saturday afternoon that's blocking the 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 uh, walkway, you would have that removed from the Well, I probably instruct the landscapers to remove it based on anything. So you would, however, you yeah. would handle that. You would address that would. to be removed. We would. So and you, I would make sure that you would have a plan. You would have a plan that would be um, in place to to manage that. Yes. If if it happened at all. Yes. If it was something that would continually be uh, an issue um, we don't want it to we don't want it to be there and we don't want it to become an enforcement issue obviously um, but it's well, eventually they paid default in the release and we can put on and I have to have Alan yeah. and we, we have retail businesses that are thrift shops and people dump their garbage and trash there in old couches because right. yeah. they don't want to drive further down the road to the transfer station. So that's why I think everyone's in tune to this because yeah. it, it's, a, it's a problem right. with other businesses in town. I think so. I think I mentioned that we have another tenant in town mm -hmm. that is a, a, a donation, you know, thrift type business called Estuary. Yep. And uh, they Knock on wood, there's been no issues that I know of mm -hmm. like this with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Well, that's just a dialogue. Yeah. So, um, since this is a, a, a continuation of a public hearing, is there anyone in attendance in the audience or online Zoom 
that wishes to speak in favor of or in opposition to, please either speak now or raise your hand. Not seeing anyone I, I from the audience. Huh? I got a comment. Okay. Yeah. And I don't see anyone online at this point. No. Uh, Commissioner Henry has a question. Just a comment. Because I think last week, the last meeting, you and I want to talk about the drive through windows. Because we recently <clears throat> rewrote all our requirements for drive through windows. And there's one, one thing that we added into the into section 53 that says an existing business with a drive through business proposing a change of use must be approved by the commission to meet and meet the current regulations or drive through will be abandoned. And I only bring that up. Not because I want to pick on HR block. I'm not sure we want to even argue about that. But if in the, in the event that they left and we're going to propose another change of use, that that price the window needs to be approved. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah. yeah. So is that plan five again? I think was your comments at the last meeting. I think you said something along the lines of was existing grandfathered in just because we want to make sure we control well we don't of course want to lose the drive through building right I mean, we you know this situation um we're keeping the existing tenant as a, as a, you know who's moving you know, within, within the property yeah. but we just as well could have had a bank right could have had a, a wells fargo or any other you know Bank and I talked to some banks that were interested. They were a little further off on their timeline. So, but of course, we don't want to lose the drive-through. It's a valuable part of the property. It's one of the reasons we bought the property. So, and it's use dependent. And that's kind of what we wrote into the regulations about drive-through windows. Is what, what what the business is and certain things. Yeah. So that's why we put that in there to make sure it was. I think what you're saying is that's not a question for the H and R block this time. That's if it goes, if somebody else comes along, right. you want it, it to I'm be clear that they would have that. Right. For the yeah, record. Talk to the commission. Right. Yeah. So if you don't agree with them, uh, <coughs> you might want to consider that. that but in the future, you know, 10 years, whatever, in the, in the future, um, in the H and R block might be there for a very long time, but since you brought it up, in the event we, another bank did want to move in there, would the commission have, have a, I guess, have a problem with that? That could be a good use for the property. He's just, he's just indicating that it needs to be reviewed at that it, at that time. Well, I'm trying to get a feel for my. Well, it was bank. it was a financial institution. If it went back to a financial institution, I would presume that it would be an allowable use okay. if it meets the it meets, standards. Right. For the, for the drive. Right. So the thing, I think the key thing is you have a property that is as a special permit and changes and additions of other special exception units are going to trip reviews by this commission. So before going forward and signing leases and saying we can do this in a month just to check in. Well, yeah, it's sure. concerning because we bought a shopping center, right? And for a lot of money. And, you know, it seems that it's rather difficult because you know the nature of the shopping center retail business is tenants move in and tenants move out. Sometimes they stay for a long time, sometimes they leave, you know, people buy a business, all kinds of things happen. Mm -hmm. And when they leave, you know, the livelihood of the business, you need to fill that space. And it, it, like in my world, that happens every day, and it's really a non-event. It's not a subway moves out, an HR block moves in. Uh, you know, a pizza hut <clears throat> moves in and a nail salon moves out. That's normal business of a shopping center. And these uses are rarely scrutinized uh, to this degree. So it, it is concerning a little bit for me long term as tenants move in and tenants move out. Uh, you know. Well, I guess the thing is just to, to check in and double check if it's a special permit. And you're moving out an H and R block to put in a subway. It's going to trip a special permit because of the use. So it's not always just moving in and out. Mm -hmm. Now you kind of have a baseline of this moving in and out with you know the retail and office uses there. But there are uses that you may not be able to just move in and move out that may list a special permit. Just like here in the hallway, we were talking about 
um, agricultural uses the trip special permit, and that's how the commission handles it here. Okay, I have one other uh, question for you. Um, we spoke at the last uh, meeting with the pylon sign that is in the parking lot and the parking spaces that you had <clears throat> identified there and suggestion that um, for public safety that the uh, curbing continue to the existing one. The, the, the latest map that was provided for this evening doesn't reflect that. As a, a condition of approval, would that be something that you would be agreeable to? Well, um, the reason we didn't is my understanding that the discussion revolved around there were four or five spaces shown up against the sign. Right. And I don't think we have those that no, been removed. See, those are gone. So you've removed them. Yeah, so those okay. no longer exist. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's no need for that because yeah. we removed the parking space. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Um, not having any other comments either from the floor or from uh, online, is the commission prepared to close public hearing this evening? Yeah. Yes. I'll make a motion to close public hearing regarding 707 Boston Post Road special exception use application. Uh, 36 Lot 101 Shopping Center B2 District Pedestrian. Second. Seconded by Jerry Lewis. Is there any discussion? Not hearing any, all those in favor of closing public hearing signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Public hearing is closed. Just to reiterate, alternates are not able to participate in the dialogue at this point, nor is the public. Um, is the commission prepared to uh, uh, deliver, deliver on, on this issue this evening? Or is there more time needed? Is there a Good. consensus able to deliberate this evening? Yes, 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 yes. 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 Okay. Um, discussion. Well, I guess we have to make a motion first and then discussion. So, uh, motion to. Well, with, yeah, with, well, discussion. Go ahead, you make the motion. Discussion is in order with regard to approval of the special exception use application. And uh, first off, I would commend Mr. Fairbank for his uh, detailed uh, improvement of the sub plan, incorporating uh, um, items that were uh, necessary to uh, re reveal total landscaping and uh, Im improvements to the site with regard to layout and the parking. And uh, thanks to him for doing that. With regard to uh, approval of, of a special exception, the uses that are, are, are as clarified are permitted in the respective district and they are subject to the satisfaction of the requirements and standards, and they appear to me to be uh, in compliance with the uh, B2 special exception uh, uses and uh, all the layout, parking, lighting, and other site plan requirements. Any other comments from commissioners? Nope. So I'll make a motion to approve 707 Boston Post Road application for special exception use to modify the parking lot to allow for reallocation of tenant space for H&R Block and a Goodwill drop-off center. 707 Boston Post Road, Map 36, Lot 101, Shopping Center, B2 District, Pedestrian Node. With the updated statement of use dated May 6th for this evening that the applicant had submitted the along addendum the to addendum the two other statements to, to other statements of, of use. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Jerry Lewis. Is there any discussion? Not hearing any, we take a vote. All those in favor of approval signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Passes five zero zero. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Okay.
Can I? Thank you. Moving on to item B, Mr. Casella, please. Blue Sky application for site plan review for operation of a biochar facility, including the construction of two cooling towers on concrete pad, construction of a exhaust cleaning room on existing loading dock, two propane tanks on concrete pads, a vaporizer at 35 Research Parkway, Map 39, Lot 5, Industrial District. Applicant Will Hessert, owner Jill Cohn, Scarf Properties LLC. Action to consider and act no later than July 9th, 2024. And speaking on part of the applicant is Attorney Casella. Yeah, good evening. Awesome. Um, Ed Casella representing uh, Blue Sky Inc., uh, DBA Blue Sky Carbon, Carbon uh, which is the applicant for this uh, application for modification of site plan approval for 35 Research Parkway. Uh, with me tonight is Will Hesser, who is the uh, CEO of uh, Blue Sky. I can give you a little bit of an overview and answer any questions that you have regarding the process. We also have Carissa, Carissa Chandler, who's operations, Steve Chandler, who's in construction as part of the use, and Angus McDonald is here, who did the site plan. We do have a few updated materials. Uh, we received comments from Jeff Jacobson on um, the end of last week, May, May 1st, and put together uh, some slight modifications to the site plan. I have one for the record. Thank you. And I have a few to hand out. And then also Thank some you. additional information uh, to help kind of clarify what's happening on the site. And oh, yes. Um, Attorney Casella, the, yep. the, what you handed out replaces what we had in the yeah. back. And I'll show you what the changes are on the site plan. Uh, it's mo mostly just uh, there were some errors in the parking numbers. Um, on the site plan, I think it showed originally like 70 something spaces, and a few of those spaces were being removed. Uh, so now it's down to 57 uh, parking spaces, which is which is the total. But I'll, I'll run through that. Um, Okay, this is 35 Research Parkway. You may be familiar with it. It's on the east side of uh, Research Parkway as you're traveling from Elm Street over to Mill Rock Road. It used to be one of the sites of Pathway Lighting. It's on the on the right hand side. It's the yellow building. So it's, it, it was built in 1975 and has been utilized as a manufacturing uh, uh, site since that point in time. Um, Blue Sky Carbon is uh, under lease and are seeking to bring their manufacturing process into it, which uh, Will will talk about, um, without really making a lot of changes. You know, the exterior of the property is going to remain substantially the same, like things like the parking, the landscaping, uh, but there are several uh, specific changes to the site that are, are in the legal notice. Um, the, there's a propane tank next to the building. Those are being moved to the back. I can, I can actually share my screen, show you these things on the site plan. That will help. Thank you. Um, so here's the, here's the site plan. Uh, on the left is uh, Research Parkway. And then the building is kind of in the middle here. Um, there's wetlands uh, to the south. Uh, they have been before the Wetlands Commission and obtained crowd approval, uh, met with the fire marshal. Uh, so they've, they've taken a lot of uh, initial steps. Um, so the changes that I was talking about is an existing propane tank uh, to the north of the building in the rear here. Uh, propane tank is going to be relocated to the east of the building in the back, and a, and a second tank will be added. Um, there's a, a space that doesn't really qualify as a um, parking space, so there's going to be a landscape island added on the, on the north uh, part of the property here. And then two uh, aspects of their operation are being constructed. The first in the back are the uh, cooling towers, and then the second is the exhaust uh, cleansing room um, that's being constructed on top of what is now um, I don't know, three to four foot high, two to four foot high loading dock. So those are essentially the modifications that are happening to the property. 
Um, the, the plan that we had before, um, the, the big change, it designated numbered parking spaces in this area to the east of the building. And that area is needed for truck turning radius. Uh, when, we, when they went to wetlands, wanted to make sure that they understood the extent of um, where the asphalt was going to be and is, and that it works for trucks uh, moving around the site. So any parking spaces that were there, which again, if, if you're at the site, there's actually no parking spaces there, uh, but that, that will be um, designated as uh, no parking um, as per the site plan. Um, we also handed out an updated statement of use uh, on the last page, the, the only, I think, the, is that the only change made to the safety use is the employee section? In the parking spaces, yep. The, the parking space provided on this plan is 57. So um, we've, that's been clarified on the first page of the statement of use. 39 required, 57 spaces available. And then on the last page, um, they outline their employee load employees on site. And this is like the maximum. I said, the zoning commission is gonna to wanna to know if you are fully functioning and achieving at the top limit of what you can do, what is the employee, um, no, what are the employee numbers going to be? So they're nowhere, unfortunately they're nowhere near this now or projected to be, but looking forward, this is what the site can handle. So um, 30, Nine to five employees, including um, folks like the, the officers who kind of run the place, the engineers who handle everything, uh, marketing, sales, all of that. And then two shifts of 10 people in the plant, so to speak. And the two shifts of 10 people are um, 12 hour shifts, 6 a.m. Uh, to 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. The proposal here is to run around the clock. Uh, so the maximum number of employees at any one time will be uh, 40 on the site at any one time. So during shift changeover? No, during shift changeover, the nine to fivers are gone. Mm -hmm. So it'll be the 10 and the 10. So that'll be max 20. Right. Oh, okay. But the earlier max is, is 40, 30 plus 10. Yep. So the shift change timeline actually works to, to make sure that the, the max is, is uh, accommodated by the site, which it is. Um, they do estimate that there you know, can be visitors to the property. Um, so they, they've included another uh, five folks for that. So those are the changes to the, to the uh, materials that you've got, the site plan change and uh, the statement of use. Um, we also provided two new things, um, kind of FYI, more than anything. Uh, we'll provide an air, air emissions kind of question and answer, you know, talking about what's going into the air and how is it being regulated. Um, and then we also provided uh, like a, a blueprint of how the system works in the building. If you look at your screen, um, you know, this, this is, this is the, the back of the building here, and then going toward the front where the exhaust cleaning room is. And this is the, the process that actually takes place uh, with what they're doing in, in creating the, the biochar. So that's an overview. Um, the final thing we did was comment on the, the letter from Jeff Jacobson, um, which I can just run through. Kind of big picture comments. Um, he gets into uh, some specific details um, and, and, and specifically including parking. The, the building itself is um, 30,000, just under 30, 29,900 square feet, uh, 6,600 square feet currently as it exists is, for lack of a better term, finished office space. Um, they're not changing a thing. So the production floor, the, the storage areas that are downstairs from what pathway use are going to continue to be used in basically the exact same way. And then the upstairs, if you're in the building, which I've been in, is, is the finished office space, uh, 6,600 square feet. And it's office space that is dedicated to the manufacturing use. 
So it's not a separate use. It's just like every manufacturing uh, business or most manufacturing businesses, they have on-site on -site office. Um, the, the Jeff's comments also talk about the number of parking spaces. And um, uh, again, this has been clarified and we're not asking for any changes to the parking. So the parking that's there now and that striped um, is going, is proposed to remain. Just as an example, um, I'll zoom in on the site plan here. This like parking space number one, um, it, it goes out a little bit past where the island is. Um, the condition is proposed to remain exactly the way it is if you're out looking at it today, which is how it's been used over the past uh, 50 plus years, I guess, at this point in time. Um, Could I ask a question? Sure. Um, in Mr. Jacobson's letter, um, item one in section um, A, he refers to 50 employees. So the statement of use has been revised to reflect a total of 40. Well, no, there's there's 50 employees, 30 in one shift, nine to five, and then 10 manufacturing, you know, um, yeah, manufacturing employees, first shift, 10 manufacturing, second shift. So it's still the 50 employees total, maximum. They won't all be there at the same time though. Okay. The max that'll be there at the same time is 40. Is 40. Okay. Thank you for the clarity. Yep. Um, the, um, the comment about Research Parkway being deeded to the town, um, I'll show you what this means. Uh, the travel way of Research Parkway comes into um, the northwest corner of the lot here. Um, these guys don't own the property. The property is owned by um, Stark Properties LLC, so they don't have authority to transfer the property to the town. Uh, I don't think there's any objection to transferring the property to the town as long as it doesn't cause any negative implications from a zoning perspective. Um, so that's you know something that we can have the owner talk to the town about. We just don't want it to delay or complicate this process. Um, comment three, um, I didn't even look for this. I'm gonna have to ask Angus, has a note been added about the sedimentation and erosion control being installed prior to construction, during construction and removed after? Yes. Okay. A note has been included. I don't think it's kind of in the notes. I don't know what number it is. If I can find it. Yes. No, there. Yeah. 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 F is, F is a reference to a soil erosion uh, control plan that was done in the 90s. Okay. Okay. And that we do have that standard note put on these, but I don't see it here right now. I I saw it yeah, in all the, as part of the wetlands approval, all of the uh, soil erosion control measures are shown on the site plan. Uh, Jeff Jacobson just asked that a note be added to the plan that all the soil erosion measures be installed prior to start of construction, be maintained during construction, and be removed after all surfaces have been installed. So we, we would agree to that. Uh, outside storage will be required, and if so, where will it be located? There will be no outside storage. Um, again, from a landscaping perspective, um, the, the property is not conforming with respect to landscaping and um, they're not proposing any changes to the landscaping. 
So it will remain non-conforming. It will remain non-conforming. Um, a north arrow has been added. I saw that in the middle. Yep. I don't know about the signature block. Yes, the signature block is on there. Yep. But if we look, we'll find that other note. But, um, and finally, with respect to the uh, base flood elevation, um, the tenants understand the properties in the flood zone, and there's um, 50 percent rule that if they add more than 50 percent to the structure, it, it would be required to be elevated above FEMA. As I said before, there aren't really aren't any changes to the building itself. Um, the office space is remaining office, the manufacturing and storage spaces are remaining those. Um, the, the major investment here is the equipment, uh, which is not included in the substantial improvement uh, calculation. So I think it would be helpful if, if uh, Will could just address the commission and give an overview and then answer any questions if, if you have uh, if you have any about what's, what's happening on the site. Awesome. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having Blue Sky Carbon here. Uh, so our company was founded to help address the climate crisis, uh, which I'm sure everyone here agrees is a pretty massive thing affecting all parts of the world, let's say we're concluded. And as part of that, uh, there is a technology called carbon dioxide removal, which is actually able to reverse climate change. How do you take CO2 out of the air and put it back in the ground? And the way we do that is by bringing in uh, wood waste source from local municipalities, uh, non-treated, these are fresh off the tree uh, waste products that come into our facility. They are then converted uh, into a product called biochar. And this is a product that has so many uses that it is, it's hard to even dive into, but it's largely used uh, to improve soil, uh, water filtration, many other items, but the important part is that it locked its carbon that was in the wood into this biochar for thousands of years. So normally, if a tree falls, decomposes, that carbon goes back into the atmosphere. Now, that carbon is in the ground for thousands of years. This creates a negative CO2 effect and it actively reverses climate change. So that's the, the premise of, of the technology, um, and we've designed this plan uh, in order to accommodate uh, the, the regulations of the town of Old Saber. Um, we have worked with uh, heat and fire, uh, fire marshal, as well as uh, building inspector to ensure that everything we're doing is safe because, you know, we're trying to help the world, to help people. So we need to make sure we're not endangering any people in the process of what we're doing. So that's undergone the, the strictest of uh, inspections from, from our side. It's also why we have a pretty incredible engineering team in house. And yeah, just very excited to. Uh, potentially bring this technology to, to Old Saber, and we'd be happy to, to answer questions about uh, what we're doing in respect to as a business, in respect to 35 Research Parkway, any questions that anyone here has. I see you've been highly detailed with regard to emissions and uh, control, and uh, I have two questions pertaining to our Section 61, mm -hmm. uh, Performance, Maintenance, and Operations. Uh, smoke, gas, or fumes you apparently have covered that. Air pollution, that's a big detailed section. Noise, there was no mention of noise that, that I saw. Mm -hmm. And we know from experience that the Swan Funeral Home, there's a crematory in the back, different but somewhat related in terms of combust combustion. Yeah. And the neighbors do not complain about the smoke or the smells, they complain about the noise. What kind of noise is generated that is not to be carried across the property line? Absolutely. So the, the noise in our process is very minimal, uh, largely because when you're combusting, I won't say bodies, but if you're combusting biological material directly, uh, it tends to make far more noise because there's far more dust and particulates getting kicked up. Uh, our process is combusting a fairly clean gas, which greatly reduces the noise. The majority of any noise that would be created would be created by uh, some of the smaller motors and water pumps, but all of those remain within the facility, uh, which greatly reduces the amount of, of noise that there is. We're in an industrial district, in an industrial district, fairly removed from most uh, property lines. But thankfully, uh, the co-founder of the company is actually an audio engineer, so we have steps that 
uh, we can take to reduce noise further uh, if, if an issue would arise, but that's not at all uh, anticipated. It, you know, there are working spaces within the office where there will be people on phone calls in the same building cohabitating operations. So um, if this was making too much noise, they wouldn't even be able to, to be in the building working. So uh, noise is not a, a concern as, as far as we are concerned. Uh, Mr. Jacobson's comments had uh, something to, it was not, not quite specific in to my way of thinking on page two of four on the May 1st letter, item 1A. Well, the calculation for required number of parking spaces is based strictly on an industrial manufacturing use at one space per 800 square feet, resulting in uh, 39 required. The statement of use indicates that approximately half of, and now it talks about employees. We don't calculate parking spaces based on the number of employees. It's based on the allocation of gross floor area. And in this case, the existing gross floor area is, is provided by the tenant. In our regulations, the gross floor area is, um, I don't think there's a lot of leeway given in terms of it being provided by a tenant that it should be part of the engineering data that the uh, building dimensions are measurable and gross floor area is defined in our regulations. And so I would like to see a gross floor area uh, provided by the method described in our regulations rather than provided by a tenant. And that gross floor area then would be allocated to the manufacturing use and the rest of the gross floor area, non-manufacturing would be allocated to a different use, most likely office. And that use would then entail a different parking calculation. And I would hope that it doesn't exceed the 57 spaces shown. I think we question why that there would be a breakdown because it's not a separate use, it's one use, it's a manufacturing use. It just has office space, which is uh, supports the manufacturing use. It's not, it's not like there's an HR block here and a uh, are there, doctor's are there, office are there. Are there desks <laughs> involved? Are there desks involved? The 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 <laughs> it's office space. It's not manufacturing if they're sitting at a desk. Manufacturing of data is not manufacturing in the way that uses are allocated. Manufacturing uses actually produce something. Uh, I understand. Process something. Yes. The majority of the people working within the office space spend time on the production floor because what's going yeah, on in the production use floor of space is relevant. They to move somewhere the else, the space is still office space. Office space is office space in the gross floor area dedicated to office space has to provide for parking for office space. If it's not you in the building, a different user of the office space would be using it as offices and be obligated to provide square footage of office space tied to a parking calculation for office space. But this is exact, these are the exact same uses which are there and have been there. So if anything, it's non-conforming right. and so it's not that's, changing. That, that, well, that may well be, but the regulations require that as part of your submission, that your gross floor area be calculated by something other than a provision by a tenant, that there should be a measurement, and it's not that hard to do, to provide the actual gross floor area of what is there today, assuming it's the same as what was there yesterday, that's not going to change. And therefore, once we have a gross floor area, then we can look at the uses inside the building. There's a manufacturing use. And as described in the statement of use and description of the employees, there will be those engaged in office use. What gross floor area is dedicated to office use? And once we have that, we can revisit the parking calculation. It's not that complicated. It, yeah, but I I think if we apply 200, one space per 200 square feet of the 6,600 square feet of office space, which pathway lighting used, and then the rest manufacturing, we're not going to have enough parking spaces. 
and if it was not right. well, if it's exactly the same yeah. use that is there now, yes, then that's a in the previously existing non conformity, okay. But we deserve to see that on paper, and we can, we can, I mean, the, the field card has it on paper, um, it has the whole area actually spelled out, including the, the finished office. So that's available. Well, that's office space. Yes, I don't. I didn't see that in the application material. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know if it was submitted, um, but it's it's available, um, and, it, and it describes exactly. And is that based, and, and, it, and is that available based on the uh, gross floor area provided by the tenant? I no, they're the same numbers. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It's bad. well. The, my problem is that. Your source of information is, is I'm not calling it suspect, <laughs> but I'm saying there's a better source of information. We and typically in all of our applications, we get an engineering design and an engineering uh, um, company or individual who will provide us with the gross floor area as per our definition of gross floor area and our regulations in Old Saybrook. I guess the question is, is that really necessary when there's no change to the interior of the building and we're going from the same use to the same use? It's necessary in terms of determining the accuracy of the allocation of uses and the degree of nonconformity resulting from the parking calculations thereby. Uh, so that in the future, if a different use were to be an application for this particular site, we would know what we have, which right now we could do better. Here, I can show you what we have. Uh, this will pop up. Uh, so this this is the building. Um, this is the rear of the building back here, uh -huh. uh, where the cooling towers are going to be located. Okay. Yeah, and then. This is the main part of the, the manufacturing floor. Here on the second floor is the um, AOF, which is office space. And then underneath, underneath it, they it's it's a, like a storage area. Uh, and the same thing over on this corner, where there's office space. It's a, it's a mezzanine level, second floor. And then underneath it is a storage area. And then this again. And storage areas don't require much parking. It's like one space for 1,200 square feet. Yeah. But we should have that broken out in a calculation in order to demonstrate that the parking is what it is and that that's what's on site. Can that be a condition of approval? You betcha. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you betcha. Perform that. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners? I have a question about the, the process a little bit. So your, your, your input is, is wood. What's the, what's the, the output? Uh, so it's a product called biochar. It's a picture of a black mulch assessment. Oh. And then that is used as a, a soil additive to improve crop yields, capture carbon, et cetera. And in, in all of the input and the output is, is in this back area by the cooling towers? Yeah, I can show it. I'll yeah. bring up this plan. So, thank you. Yeah, let me just get the right PDF here. No, we don't keep anything on site. Um, yeah. All right. So, with, sorry, let me just do this with my mouse and then you can go into it. So, if you notice here, here are the cooling towers. And, and then I'm going to flip, I'm going to flip back to the site plan right now just to orient you. Okay. Um, so, so it's now the opposite. Yeah. Um, but basically, the stuff is going to come in here on, on top of the cooling towers, okay? Right. And then now I'll let Will take it away because that comes in right about below on this, this diagram below the cooling towers. Gotcha. So the trucks come in here. Okay. And so then it enters that, uh, where you see that green box, that's the base of the inlet conveyor to our process. Uh, the char then exits if you point right there. Yeah. Um, oh, so that's uh, dry material now moving. So that first component is a dryer. That second, much larger unit is what actually converts it into biochar. So they get dry here and then they get moved over to here yep. into this big unit. Yep. And drying is how you avoid a lot of the air emission issues 
uh, that can come with any sort of uh, process using wood. Uh, high moisture uh, is where why you have things like a lot of noise in the crematorium. Uh, it's why bonfires produce a lot of smoke. That's one of the biggest reasons. So that issue is eliminated there. The char then exits from you know, and, and the mouse from this point right there. The char then moves into a bagging system that also quenches it with water. And Mr. Mouse, we're right, right, oh, right, sorry, right. back down here. Yeah, right there. Oh, gotcha. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The, the mouse is sort of like obscured by the motor. Um, so the, the char exits the system, it gets flinched with water, uh, and then it gets moved to the, there's a garage door through here. It gets moved to the front of this building where there uh, is a shipping bay for it to get loaded and sent off site because we don't store uh, quantities of char in any significant amount on site because uh, we already have places for it to go. So we just coordinate the truck to pick it up. Uh, get it out of our way. Um, because also, in full transparency, uh, the, the majority of the revenue that we make is, is from carbon removal credits. Those credits only get accredited to us and they get paid when the char, not when it's made, but when it goes in the soil. So I'm very, again, I'm very, very keen on getting the char into its end use as quickly as, as humanly possible. And what kind of vehicles are you shipping it in? Uh, so the, the wood comes in in a 100-yard uh, walking floor trailer, uh, and that is a singular entity that we have a relationship with in Middletown that's doing all the collection. We don't want to do collection on site because, A, the coordination uh, in this area is wildly difficult. Two, uh, if people are dumping wood outside, uh, almost guaranteed it'll be within 100 feet of wetlands. Then you get eutrophication, nutrients leaching into wetlands. Mm -hmm. Not ideal, especially as an environmental company. Uh, to garbage wetlands in any significant way. So it's off site. That singular entity brings the wood chips there. That singular entity then uh, takes the char off site in the same trailer that the wood came in. Uh, if char needed to go to a different place, uh, there'd probably be a flatbed with the bags getting strapped down onto the flatbed. The bags would be on pallets, although it's like a kind of is it? Super sack. Super sack. It's a one or two pallets. cubic yard super sack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you stack two of them on top okay. of each other on a pallet. Yeah. You strap it to a, a flatbed. Right. So. So the, the solid waste product mm -hmm. goes where? It, the, the char or the, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, the char. char? Well, whatever yeah. your solid waste product is, mm -hmm. the ultimate combustion is everything that's volatile is gone and you're left with some solid. Yes. And it's presumably mostly carbon. Yes. All right. So where does that go? Back to Middletown mostly. It goes away. Uh, I, the majority of that goes back to that collection point for wood in Middletown. A uh, small minority of it uh, might go to other customers if someone wants right. to. Right. So it's a, it's, give a, us money. It's, a, it's a product which has value to others. Yes. yes. In terms of developing carbon based products and on their own. Yes. Completely different from what you do. Yeah. It increases crop yields about 10 to 20 percent. It uh, filters, um, I, ironically, it's the eutrophication point. It can pull. Nutrient leaching out of things like wetlands and used to remediate that. You can use it to remediate industrial areas, of which we're all aware there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, components that have been dumped into the soil in Connecticut. I live right by the piano factory in Essex, for instance. So God only knows what's in the soil down the hill for me. Uh, yeah, don't worry about it. We're, I'm going to just donate some char down there for the, the good of my kids. Um, Send it over to Mariner's Way. You know, yeah. if, if you want to provide a list, <laughs> you know, we're happy to deliver. help. Um, so based on the 10 people, I'm going to eliminate the office people, mm -hmm. 10 people running the production, I guess. Yes. How, how many trucks and, and what's the... Okay, yeah. So there's, I must... Um, Engineering. I'm sorry. <laughs> Too much data. Uh, it's okay. I, I lead technology during the day. We can do data and we'll. <laughs> so it's at, at most, we need six trucks uh, per day. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we are uh, unifying the collection into a single entity that has 100 yard um, walking floor trailers because that, that's quite a bit of, of capacity of wood and that reduces the traffic flow, uh, which is awesome from a zoning standpoint. It reduces the amount of diesel emissions. Um, that are being put in the air, which is good for public health. Also good because we have to track every bit of emissions that come off of our process. So we deduct that, like we removed this much carbon by putting the chart in the ground, 
you need to deduct things like if you use propane, how much propane you burn, what was the carbon that they put in the atmosphere. So there's actually an economic uh, benefit to reducing emissions in the supply chain, um, which is a, another motivation for that. Also it's having the same problem. truck go back to the same place with the, the char product is also largely yeah. beneficial because now the round trip gets solves two things, reducing the amount of emissions and reducing the amount of traffic flow. So that'll be helpful. We're looking at for number say like three walking trailers with three trucks coming in and three going out, typically on a daily use. Yeah. For number sake. Okay. Maybe you get over here, but if oh, you need to simplify. If the trucks going out mm -hmm. are headed in a direction that puts them on I-95 South, mm -hmm. they'll need to exit the property on Mill Rock Road in order to go to 154 to get on I-95 near the auto mall in order to go south. Because in order to go south, they should not be going to Ingham Hill Road and trying to go under an 11 foot six railroad underpass, which is flooded oh, yeah. on a regular basis. Well, right. Right. I'm very aware of how much right. so, <laughs> it floods right. every time I try to get to work. So, so uh, to on a condition of approval, it would be trucks that ultimately head on I-95 South mm -hmm. will not use Ingham Hill Road. That's very reasonable. And fits with our plans perfectly. So. How new is this process? And are there other biochar facilities in Connecticut? Yeah, so the, the process of biochar um, has started thousands of, of years ago, uh, you know, invented by uh, the native people of the Amazon. Uh, it's become more of an industrial technology, probably as um, recent as, as the 1980s. Uh, we, there is at least one other biochar equipment producer out in Woodstock uh, who actually mentioned Old Saybrook had a wood waste problem when I talked with him years ago, which is sort of how this whole thing came together. And why is this biochar business in Old Saybrook? Um, is because of the conversation with Joven in Woodstock. Uh, I believe this will be the first operational facility, but there's one in Maine. Uh, there's many throughout the United States, uh, many throughout uh, European Union, many within California, which as we're all aware, has some of the strictest um, permitting zoning and, and air quality regulations. Uh, on the planet. Um, and so I'm actually on the, the U.S. Uh, Biochar Coalition, which is a group that exists to help ensure that we have all the proper regulations in place from a safety standpoint um, and, and making sure that people are abiding by, they're not just like heating up wood in a kiln and, you know, that knows what goes into the atmosphere. So we are trying to bring industrial safety professionalization to, to this industry. So thank you. Any other questions? Since this is a site plan review, and it's not a public hearing, we can take this to, I believe, a vote uh, directly. Uh, yeah, this, is, motion. this is just a regular site plan review. Correct. Any, uh, any special considerations with regard to uh, CAM or Gateway no. or any no. other? No. 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 That's good. Yeah. And, um, it's already discussed conditions of approval, but it would include uh, a demonstration of the calculation of gross flow area based on our definition of gross flow area as measured to the exterior walls, the allocation of gross flow area to the different uses in the building, storage, office, manufacturing, and the parking calculation resulting therefrom. That uh, with regard to section 61, uh, performance, maintenance, and operations that uh, the applicant has provided information regarding smoke, gas, fumes, and air pollution, but the applicant will also comply with 61.3. No noise will be transmitted outside the lot where it originates when noise has a decibel level octave band intermittence or beat frequency that endangers public health or safety or impairs the value or reasonable use of any other lot except out of time signals or other noise necessarily involved in the construction 
or demolition of buildings and stru or structures. And the oh, in 61.4, no vibration will be transmitted outside the lot. Also have the and the vehicles departing to use 95 South will not use Ingham Hill Road. Right. And then we also have, which unless it's been found, is the uh, erosion control statement. And there are a couple of uh, small notes about that in the area. Yeah, but not in. But no, not they're in here. Okay. But they're not, they're small. Okay. At the area of excavation. So we'll put a, we'll put a bigger note up. Okay. Just as a condition. Okay. That covers all the conditions. Um, did you get that? Can you repeat the erosion one? Uh, uh, I, the yeah. To show item three and item uh, three Jacob's and pencil letter. Yeah. Before. Right. Seven. Jacob's letter. Right. So the motion to approve. Blue Sky application for site plan review for operation of a biochar facility, including construction of two cooling towers, towers on concrete pad, construction of an exhaust cleaning room on existing loading dock, two propane tanks on concrete pads, and a vaporizer with conditions previously mentioned. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jerry Lewis. Any further discussion? Not hearing any, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Extension passes 500. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commission. Turn over to Chris for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we're going to continue with the meeting and uh, turn over to our CEO, our, our CEO, Chris. All right, so I'm going to make this quick. That's why I had a feeling we might have a long meeting. So I sent you kind of a summary um, on a staff report uh, last week. Um, just so you're aware, we are continuing with um, Sarah uh, Makowicki, who's helping us out in the office, has been identifying sign, potential sign violations, and she's not an enforcement officer to make a list to report to the zoning enforcement officer. Um, so we've been working on that. Um, everything, there were 31 letters sent, seven compiled and closed. There have been second notices and continuing to move forward with those. Um, just to mark your calendar, May 15th, there have been some questions. Those of you who want a, a, the desegregate Connecticut walkability audit, May 15th at 5 o'clock in this room and hybrid, um, there will be uh, presentation on the results of that audit, followed by 6.30, the Planning Commission is taking in input um, for the Hazard Mitigation Plan update. Um, I know at least one new member has inquired about the uh, regulations to complete commission um, training. Uh, so I know our members have been on the commission who um, completed that in the email. I did send some links, um, but new members as well as our veteran members who still have to uh, work on the continuing end. Uh, hopefully in the fall, I'm hoping to do maybe do some in-house um, kind of fair housing, affordable housing training because it's been a hot topic. Um, but one thing that you could take um, is there is the basic training classes from UConn Clear. Um, for new commission members, uh, probably not a bad idea from some of our veteran commission members to have a refresher on that. Um, quickly, I filled you in. We're working on the land use department on the Mariner's Way initiative is going to go live probably within the next month. Um, and once we've had a few editing issues with the document, 
Um, but we were asked those of you who attended to schedule this for a May workshop. It looks like maybe now that would come into June. Um, the department made two grant applications um, from Cold Spring Brook to Indian Town. One was a coastal resilience um, predetermination or application for a grant through the National Fish and Wildlife. The other one, we're still working on this, the National Fish and Wildlife Futures Fund, Long Island Town. Um, we're also working on that foreshore resilience plan. I'm just kind of getting closer to completion. So I would say in the next month or so, there'll be draft information for you to review. I'm sorry to rush, I gave you a little list, but um, one thing that I think I forgot to mention in our last meeting, and I think it's something that we need to address while we do not have any applications on the table, is clarification of regulations, particularly the setback in the pedestrian note. So um, after the Van Wildens approval, or I'm sorry, application was here, um, there was, they went back to the ZBA for the wording that it was exactly, um, I, I made some drafts for you to look at, and I know it's kind of late. I think we're going to have that. That the setback in the pedestrian node to the street line was exactly 10 feet, not less, thank you, not more, not less, exactly 10 feet. So the Van Wilders application that you had seen uh, that went to the ZBA. So I did a little homework on the previous applications that we've approved in the pedestrian node. And the West Marine development where the Wayback Burgers is, that is exactly 10 feet. On the other side of the street, the Max's Place development, it has varying from 10 to 11, you know, it has different, it's 10 or more feet, not exactly 10. So my thought was, obviously the commission encouraged the Van Wildens um, applicant to go back to the ZBA with the strictly 10 foot interpretation. And I think we need to clarify it in the regulation because in the past it was inter interpreted differently. So what I did was I put together um, some text that would fix that um, because I think we need to do it sooner um, then later, and then there were also two things Bob had mentioned in a previous meeting. There was a reference to the narrow street setback. And um, I think it was Bob who suggested we clarify the statement of use to include some of the things mm -hmm. that were missing tonight, hours of operation, details of operation, number of employees to the statement of use, because unfortunately the statements we are not getting are very detailed, but I think um, the focus really would be um, amending the pedestrian node 10 feet and no further than 10 feet from the street line. I think that clarifies that if that's- That clarifies the next step, that the word just above that line, the last word is one word setback. In the existing regulations, that would have been two words, set space back. And so I would suggest, suggest that rather than use S-E-T-B-A-C-K in whatever configuration, how about it, that a structure be located? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that kind oh, of- and, Oh, sorry. Go ahead, keep going up. Would that be <laughs> any part of the structure or at least one wall of, one, or one wall of the structure, the entire wall? West Marine it has is in the ped node and the corner of the building is 10 feet from the property line, but the building is angled so yeah. that that's the only part. Should the pedestrian node allow things like the building at West Marine or should it have a wall that's along the street as a liner building? <laughs> Isn't there also, if it's more than 40 feet, you're allowed to? 50 feet, you're allowed to step the building back. You have to step you have it back. You have to step or something. Yeah. Right. Temporary solution. I, I would think the whole length of that wall should be 10 feet. I think that was the original intent, yeah. was to have it be more uh, 
aligned with pedestrian traffic right. on, the, on the sidewalk right. and not just have a corner of a building close to the sidewalk right. and the rest of the building angled with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, I, but I think John has a good point. If you say the whole street wall has to be 10 feet and the building is 90 feet, Oh, at 40 maybe. feet, you'd have to put a two foot jog in the wall, which then oh, makes it 12 oh. feet. Then it would have to go to 12 feet. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you just, had, right. the, you just had the so, nose there, but I lost him. That, I mean, well, it's a two one. foot jog. Yeah. I don't want to. I, no, it, seem, it seems like right. West Marine figured out a way to do it. Right. But, but right. it's yeah. not exactly intent. But but John's point is really he's good. He's right, but they could step it yeah. towards the street two feet oh. and then back to 10 feet. But then so that would put it eight from 10. Right. Mm -hmm. So they would, have, I mean, they kind of yeah. have to go yeah. 10, 12, 10. So it's just a matter of realizing what you can get. I'm okay with West Marine because if pedestrian has a building that's right there and they'd be foolish to make the pedestrians walk for forever to get to the door at the far end of the building, they should accommodate that so i'm, I'm okay so with, the, with, with the way with what's proposed here that the building be located <laughs> yeah yeah so and i guess the other thing that you know came to mind is for the pedestrian node you're trying to get buildings closer to the street you're giving them some relaxation and in, in property lines and side lines but how does a 10-foot rear property line Help a building in the structure in the in the pedestrian node, or other than maybe it helps to achieve a bigger building with narrower setbacks. It just doesn't. No, that doesn't really make sense. And help you I don't think. I think you're. Do we need this? I don't think so. Do we need this? It, it, it was. Well, I mean, from the rear made. property line. Yeah, that was in there, and it's like what uh, that setback should was that setback is the same as it is otherwise, right? See the way that the way that I think I'm trying to figure out what Christine was doing at the time. There's Christine Nelson who was brought off for pedestrian node and short setback. But yeah. It was a bonus to the developer to have the building be a liner building at 10 feet from the street line. They could then enhance the size of the building, make it bigger. If the other setbacks stayed the same, they built more building because right. it was in the pedestrian node. And if they don't want to be in the pedestrian node and build close to the sidewalk, then you've got what everybody else gets everywhere else. Well, it was it was a, a way of allowing for bigger buildings, subject to other limits, coverage and whatnot. But well, I guess the only thing I can think of is that if you have a building 10 feet away from the road, you have your liner buildings, all your parking goes in the middle. So your parking really isn't in the back of a building. So maybe it gave it, allowed the building to go back, back or from, more from parking, parking in the middle. And that's the only thing. Well, the parking's got to be pushed back from the street. More than no, I'm saying from the rear property line. Yeah. So if you have your, you know, your buildings along the street line, then you have an area in between Parking. for parking and then you have another building in the back so allowing the larger building in the back to go to the 10 feet might allow for more parking in between the front of the larger building and behind the liner building maybe that was the yeah, reason. behind the line right right the the 10 if there's only 10 feet from the property line to a building there's not enough space to put any kind of a vehicle right. drive right. between the building and the street. Right. That's in favor of pedestrians. Right. And so you should not have any kind of a building that requires circumnavigation right. to access a drive-through window of any kind right. Right. in a pedestrian right. road. So we leave it at 10 feet. So leave the room. Leave it at 10 feet. I'll leave it. Okay. All right. No, I just was yep. kind of. Yep. Good question. Good dialogue. All right. We'll agree with the update and the statement of use. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sure. Good. Is everybody okay with it? Yep, yep. Sure. I'm not trying to rush it, but at the yep. same time, we're going to get into a situation again where we have the application. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
where we have what? So right, there's been two interpretations of this. West Marine was exactly 10 feet. Mm -hmm. The Max's place allowed for more than the 10 feet. Then Wildgens, when that came through, it came that this commission interpreted it was the exactly 10 feet and went back to the ZBN. So I think it's just clearer mm -hmm. before any other applicants come in in the pedestrian node to just spell it out and get it into the regs as soon as possible right. since it's been interpreted two different ways in the past. So let's, so let's move forward. All right, so I'll schedule it as soon as yep. can can we can. Is there anything else you can think of that we need to fix? I mean, not a giant project like a, oops, there's a typo, not let's write a new <laughs> section. Um, that you caught, you know, when you've been reviewing your regs. Not right now. Uh, we just did updates anyway, but that one just seemed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank out. you for doing that. Right, okay. And our next meeting will be. Who we have? So our next meeting, um, which is the twentieth. Twentieth. Um, Van Wildens um, is submitting with the hope that they're getting their variance on May 8th. And Fine Federal will be coming in to ask to go to retail sales, open retail. But you have the application, so we can't talk yeah, about it. Sense. So they'd like to remove the by appointment uh, provision. So we just have those two things? So At far, point, right? it doesn't mean we won't have, we'll have more, but okay. And then, that should be, I suspect, we do have one house in the gateway for your June 3rd meeting for gateway special exception. Um, I suspect at some point in June, there's a cannabis cultivation application, which probably will go through. Um, Dave Royston did mention that Max's place at some point would be coming in for a preliminary. Um, and, and I just have a, I have a lot of small things out there that mm -hmm. I don't know when they're coming in, but it's like, oh, we'll be in in April. And then I'm like, but it's right. June. Yeah. <laughs> We're at the Whole Foods. Whole Foods right. has not applied to the Zoning Commission. I'll make okay. a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Thank you very much. 30 to stop.